Welcome to Bouncing Back, I'm Stephanie Rule. As we kick off the fall season, there's a lot to be excited about. Students are back in school, bars and restaurants are bustling, and people like me, we are back in the office. And while there is a lot to be excited about, there's also a lot of challenges, in some cases, new challenges. For small businesses specifically, how do they deal with inflation? labor shortage issues, the supply chain issues that haven't yet gone away. Well, I got to work with one small business owner in Brooklyn and learn about her cafe, and together, hopefully, started to navigate a new path forward in this time of a new normal. How's your day going so far? It's going. I'm Kim Williams Davis, and I'm the proud owner of Bushwick Lion Cafe. Kim and her husband, Raymond, opened this Brooklyn coffee shop in 2015. We got a smart list. Okay, there you go. When we first opened Bushwick Line, we were a coffee and pastries only. Surrounded on all sides by bodegas and fast food joints, they saw a need to offer healthy food options in their community. But we were able to bring food to our space and to our community, and that really changed the business in a very profound way. Before the pandemic, Kim's shop had started catering for corporate clients all of which helped grow her business. The food just brought us into doors that doing coffee and pastry alone wasn't able to do for us. But like many restaurants and cafes across the country, COVID flipped her whole world upside down. During the first year of the pandemic, Bushwick Grind shut down completely for nine months. One day you can open, the next day you close. So it was so overwhelming, it was very difficult to be operational. Kim was able to stay afloat by leasing out the shop to small home-based businesses. We had folks here selling shea butter and jewelry, and one uh, sister was selling champagne. Now that the shop is up and running again, Kim's facing new challenges in a very different economic landscape. I think it's been difficult to maintain a staff. It has been a revolving door of just turnover after turnover after turnover. She's paying hundreds to post jobs online, even as inflation is cutting into her profits. And she's dealing with rising cost of goods too. When I got an invoice uh, very recently and I saw a gallon, I paid $8 for a gallon of milk. And I was like, what? I thought it was a typo. It is very difficult. I've had to make um, incremental changes on our prices. Um, I know that I will have to make a broad price increase on our menu. Kim is even putting her dream of expanding on hold. I do need to relocate. I've been working on doing that for the last 18 months and have not been successful, been outbid, outpriced every time, but that is the priority. If things don't improve, Kim may need to shut down the cafe. But while times are tough, she wants to stay in business for the sake of her community. Our uh, customer base is very diverse, which I love, because Brooklyn is very diverse, so it really is a makeup of our community. We host a community fridge. Every single day that fridge, we have folks coming in that make deposits and make withdrawals of all different backgrounds. We offer counter therapy, as I call it, from both sides of the counter, just while we're brewing your coffee. So that's what keeps me going, because I do think it has purpose. Like so many small business owners, the one-two punch of the pandemic and then inflation has made it almost impossible to survive. But we need small businesses to survive and thrive. We need them to keep our communities vibrant, but also keep our economy going. So I met with Kim and together worked on strategies with one goal in mind, to help her business bounce back. Hi there, I'm Stephanie, nice to meet you. I'm Stephanie, that's so funny. I know, you're in my living room daily. I appreciate it. <laughs> so talk about where your business is now. New York is back, people are out, they're working, they're socializing. So talk about where your business is today. There are pockets of New York that has been hit harder than others. I believe that we are in one of those pockets. If you go to the main street of our store, there's about four of those stores that didn't come off the ride. Like they closed down. I have had so many of our regulars who brought with us from the day we opened, who just moved out of the area. And a lot, you know, the schools haven't reopened. Those are all our core customers. They have not returned. We know those schools are going to be reopened. More people are going back to work in the office. A few months from now, if you're back to your foot traffic and capacity that you were pre-COVID, if you combine that with all of this new catering business that you have that you didn't have pre-COVID, could you end up in a stronger position than you were in two years ago? 
<laughs> we definitely could, but I have to figure out a way to offset these extremely high costs so we can be, you know, stronger. In order to cut some of those costs, I gave Kim some tips and some homework assignments. So first things first, I want you to write down every single thing you have to pay for. So take a look at all of the things you know you owe, all of those lenders, and pick up the phone and say, talk me through, can we renegotiate? Is there anywhere where we can maybe lower my costs? And guess what? The answer might be, nope, nope, nope. But it's definitely no if you don't ask. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. Next, we looked at her hiring challenges. So you mentioned it would cost you $500 for a job posting. Reach out to those local colleges, see if they've got sites where you can make those job posts. But there may be a free job posting site at those schools, and there's a lot of young people who are looking for work, and they're coming to New York in the next month. Let's try to scoop them up before other people do. And we tackled her big dream of moving to a better location and starting a community garden outside her shop. My biggest challenge is, is actually my longest term challenge, which is I need to move, I need to relocate, I need to be in a better foot traffic area. So for 18 months, I've been working with realtors to, to do that. And, and every time, either outbid, out cost, bidding over asking, and it's just, you know, like unfortunate because I'm in an area where my great grandmother, my grandmother, my mother lived and I can't afford to buy a square because $1.3 million, which I'm approved for, is like pennies, change. My advice, budget for those long-term goals. So if every month when you're thinking about your expenses, could one of those expenses that you're writing a check to be your long-term goal? Oh, right? If, if every month could you add to your expenses, I'm making up the number, a $500 expense for your long-term goal, write that check at the end of the month and start building that account. We have something at the front of the store called the Brick Boutique. It's a big, beautiful brick wall. It's our retail wall when it's not being used. We rent that out. I think I can use that budget because it costs me nothing. I'm just moving my stuff off the wall and letting folks who have products come in and sell their services. And they pay a fee to do that. I think I can make 100% of that fee that slush that fund because it, it cost me nothing. I and love that, that. My final piece of advice to Kim, build your brand. You have this amazing business, but a lot of these opportunities, right? You wanna make a community farm? You might find somebody who wants to collaborate with you. A, a farm might be right outside New York that wants to do this with you, but they've never heard of you. So I want you to just start thinking about between now and the next time I see you, what's your brand? What do you want your brand to be? How do you want people to know you? Because we can start building that brand, especially using social media, which in many, many ways is free to build your brand. And that way we're going to find those partners who want to lend to you, who want to invest in you, who want to back you. And the next time we come back, we're going to talk about how we're going to put that brand out there and how we're going to attract dollars and partners. I love that. I definitely can. Over the course of the next four weeks, Kim got to work. I actually found the bag of potatoes recently that was much cheaper than the box that I normally get, so I got three bags. These burrito bowls here are the most expensive paper good that we have. I got this now with a different vendor, and that brought the cost down about 20, 30%. The cost to pop up at the on the Brick Boutique is $175 for five hours for one day. I'm actually making it a goal by the end of this year to have three locations. I checked in for an update. I'm very, very happy to see you. It has been a month since we last spoke. How's it going? Thank you, but I'm so excited to catch up with you. All right, let's go over your homework. What I had asked you to do was go over all of your bills and first, were you surprised by anything? Certain things surprised me. So two years ago, even last year, there was no gas tax. It wasn't a um, line item on my invoices. So then it occurred to me, if I just increase my orders to come less frequent, then I can save like almost $50 every two weeks, so almost $100 a month by cutting that expense. Well, let's talk about those fees. I'm guessing that gas surcharge that some of those vendors are now putting on you probably started around May, June, when gas was really expensive. Gas prices have gone back down, so you need to be dialing them and saying, hey, what are you doing with that money? That's so true. And I do love the correction in language because I'm calling it a tax, like I have no choice but to pay it. 
right? It's not a tax, it's a surcharge. Had you reached out to vendors in the last few weeks to talk about what you're currently paying and ways to possibly pay less? I have. So I do have one vendor that I actually I spoke to last night. I put an order in and I said, this is too expensive. I can now order this with this other vendor. And they said, let me see what I can do. And then they sent me an updated invoice for those same items. It is a reminder every few months. I'm not saying you need to go out and find another vendor and put the screws to them, but you need to remind them you need to be getting best pricing. We also talked about her staffing issues. I know we had talked about you potentially reaching out to nearby schools. You had a lot of college students, even high school students coming back into the city, possibly looking for part-time work. Any luck on the job search front? I'm so excited to give you this update. I applied for a program where LaGuardia College assigns interns to only 470 businesses. And guess who's one of the businesses? Then so I get a culinary student. So she starts on Monday for 12 weeks. Super excited. So she's a college student and she works with us for 30 hours a week for free 99. I pay zero. Okay. I love everything about this. And I have another update in that area. So I, Bring found, it. I found another program that I was approved for and they are taking entry-level culinary curious students through uh, education. So they're giving them level two line cook training, and then they're putting them in work sites. So I applied to be a work site and we're corresponding. It looks like I'm approved as a work site. So. I'm thrilled. And all her work is paying off in a big way. Kim is building her brand and expanding the cafe by making a key connection with another local business. I partnered with a business owner who owns a bar in Bushwick on Bushwick Avenue. So for the entire month of August, Bushwick Grind popped up in their shop and we did our weekend brunch. We haven't been able to do brunch here since COVID. And we did our shrimp and grits and chicken and waffles and all the things that we can't do here in this space. It went so well, we got locals, and it also allowed me to see how we would be received in that market, which was very, very well, well received. I, I'm like blown away right now. I gotta tell you, you really sound like you're in a great place. I'm so excited to be back in New York. I'm definitely gonna come see you. Maybe I'll come see you for brunch at the end of the month. Oh, that would be so cool. You love yes, it. I would definitely come. I really enjoyed doing this with you. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. I'm extremely grateful. So thank you for your mentorship. Thank you for this platform. I, I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.